Hello all. Um, this is week four, depicting shine, shadows and transparency. Um, but this week I'm going to demonstrate painting shadows and concentrating on shadows on buildings um, this week. Um, and this is going to take, I'm afraid, quite a long time. Um, because I want to start and finish the picture, if I can, so that you can see the finished article. So I will be stopping and starting quite a, a few times, I think. We'll see how it goes, and I hope it works out. Um, I think I've sent you notes. I sent you notes on, day, on week one um, on shadows, so I hope you still got those, and if so, have a read. Um, and I'll try to talk you through other aspects as we go along and um, I'm not going to waste any more time talking because I have a lot to do and these are the colours that I'm going to use on my building okay so pop those up there in case I need to refill my palette at any time don't squeeze too much out at a time in case it gets wasted but keep your colours nice and handy um, in case you do need to, to top up your palette. This is the aspect that I'm actually going to paint and this will be familiar to some of you, quite a few of you in fact. Um, it's a little village in Corfu, a little rural area of a particular village that we, we visit and it has lovely colours in the buildings and as you see some really nice shadows so I'm going to have to keep an eye on those and, and not only are there shadows cast onto the ground there are the shadows within bricks and tiles and doorways and so on and so forth but first of all I'm going to pop a sky down and then I'll possibly have to stop while I wait for that to dry so that um, anything that I paint that's near the sky won't bleed up into it. I've mixed up a really nice bright blue because it's going to be a nice Mediterranean sky and that's a, a Windsor blue red shade and you need to make quite a, a large pool of that so that you don't, that's one thing you don't want to do is to run out of your sky colour just going to be a little vignette of this this village. I've already popped down a little wash behind the buildings of raw sienna so that I keep all the colours nicely together and there's a little glow going on on the horizon there. So I've wetted my I'm not going to go right to the edge of the paper because that will tell us that it is a vignette and that there's more going on in the actual subject. So it needs to be deeper towards the top of the page because that's the area above my head, if you like, if you're standing there, which will help to give a sense of distance. Okay. And I've got some poles that are reaching up into the sky, which in fact I have painted over. Because they're darker than the sky colour, and so therefore I can leave those painted over and, and paint over the top when, when the sky is dry. Right, I've tried to vary it a little bit here. The focal point is here, so leading up into a, a little bit of a lighter area of sky, which will hopefully add some interest. So when you reach this point with your sky, try not to touch it anymore unless you really, really have to. Um, it's dried up with a slightly hard edge there, where it's met the dry raw sienna but I've softened that away so that's all I'm going to do with the sky and I'll wait for that to dry 
it's still slightly damp at the edge of my sky area there so I'm popping the foliage in while that's damp so that part of it will float into the water on the horizon area and give me a little sense of distance there. Distant foliage has quite a lot of blue in it. But as you come nearer to the foreground, it has depth in it and is darker. And sometimes ha it, that area there is behind the building, so it's going to be dark. But it has quite a bit of yellow in it towards the foreground often. So I'm just dropping little touches of water back on there just to create some texture type marks and to create some distance to that little patch of foliage there. And there's another patch here which in fact is slightly closer. So I've made that slightly more yellow. And there's my pole there, so I'm just trying to avoid that a little bit. help to bring the building forward and take the foliage back a bit. There's no need to put an awful lot of work into that really. It's just some distant foliage and bringing a little bit of colour into our picture of a different sort. Right little touches of water on the top there just to soften it away a bit and make it look realistic and distant. Okay fine so now I'm going to start on the building and I'm I've put a building in the front. In fact on my picture there is a, a wall but behind the wall is a building and I wanted to put the wall in so I've changed it up a little bit which is something we can all do. Um, I've put the wall in because I want to um, set the scene this side with helping, helping with perspective. So I'm not going to put a lot of effort into this particular wall. because my focal point is here and I want to take us off and round the corner there and that's why I've popped that there because it's going to give a, a similar sort of shape and size to, to what's going on this side which will help with perspective and something we've got to think about all the time. Now there's some shadow underneath the eaves here. So I'm actually popping that bit of shadow down while that's still damp. And I'm using my flat brush because that's actually going to help me to get nice sharp edges and shapes to my, my building here. As I said, I don't want to put a lot of work into this little building this side. That was sepia, 
and ultramarine blue. Nice and dark though under here. So there's a bit of artistic license going on here with this edge of this building, but I think it's a lovely lead-in to have something like that at the edge. And there are some shutters here, so I can just indicate these shutters fairly easily by just using my flat brush. Now I need to put a little bit of something going on with the with the tiles on the roof. So I'm just popping down the base colour of these tiles and any other markings I can see in them I can put in a, a bit later when it's drier. But I won't do very much to that one. So I'm going to work wet and fairly loosely because I haven't got time to allow my areas to dry all the time. I'm going to have to stop to allow some things to dry but I think that's fine for that little side there. Okay. So now I'm going to start working on the buildings here and coming across. And there's just an old wall here taking us off around the corner. So. Um, I'll give that a little light wash of raw sienna, keeping it all nice and bright, but then mingling other colours into it. You have to work out which side and where the light's coming from. And in fact, the light is coming across this way. So this wall, part of this wall is going to be light. That's going to be in shadow. This facing wall will be light and it will be light there. But it's going to be quite dark, I think, going off behind the corner here. So I'm actually just making texture into this wall. And I can make brick shapes and stone shapes into that. when it becomes a little drier but at the same time leaving some light and you do actually see lots of colour in these lovely old walls in these ruined areas in Corfu especially in the walls that have been um, renovated and left and then renovated again and so on and so forth so taking a smaller brush and dropping some water on the top of that is going to create some lovely shapes for me which means I won't have to touch it too much but I can go back and tidy it up later by putting some lovely brick and stone shapes in but dropping the water in starts to indicate that for me without having to do very much Now this is a wall that's facing the sun, so I'm keeping that one quite light and letting white paper show through as well, which is really going to help. This wall too is facing the light. So if you, if you are confused about where the light is coming from or, or you think you may forget where the light is coming from, give yourself a little arrow or something to, to help you with remembering where, where it's going to be. But it's still going to have some depth going on underneath the eaves where the little tiles are sticking out. Okay, so I've just dropped that in. I'm 
Can you see where I was working too wet here? I've actually now got a, a cabbage appearing. So be careful and allow areas to dry, which I didn't have time to do there, but I can go back and fix that up. Right, so I need a nice terracotta type colour, which I'm making with burnt sienna and a little bit of alizarin. So I'm just going to use my flat brush and it's very jagged and very ruined and broken up. So again, I can make the shapes into the tiles when in fact it's drier. So that's all I need to do for the moment, but leaving some light paper there as well. So putting a bit of colour into the shadow under there. Keeping the colours together is always good. I want to make this roof top slightly different and it is in fact yellower it has some yellower tiles going on on this one which is fortunate because that helps to differentiate differentiate one from the other and again it's all broken up so using my flat brush is stopping me from fiddling and looking at every shape Good. Right, there's a part of a house peeping out from behind there, which has a lot of texture in the wall. So use the, if you're using a flat brush, use the little corner of it, use it as a flat, and use it in a sort of chisel type way. Right. Put another colour in with that one. That's like a cement type wall with lots of texture going on in there as well. So dropping that water back on is giving me some nice texture. Got quite grey tiles in this one, which is good, it's not very significant, so it's going to look distant and go back. Some shadow behind here which is going to send it even further back so all of these shadows can be put in as you go along the shadows on the pathway <coughs> will very likely go in at the end I just need some shadow behind here so I've mixed I like to keep my shadows very similar to the colour that I'm working with so my shadow colours change a lot and they're not all seen as, as grey. That was okay to put that on there when it was almost dry. Try not to see shadows as grey. If you then overpaint them they're going to still look nice and realistic and hopefully not overtake. While I'm up in this area I can actually pop in one of my pools with the edge of my brush. And I'm not worrying at all if it isn't straight. We're in Corfu and nothing is. Now this one needs to be slightly different
taller. There are wires coming from these, so at some point I may put the wires in. I, I really like putting wires into pictures because I think it gives added interest. Now let's pop my little pole in. This one's got something going on the top of it. I don't know what it is. So fine. And there's a little chimney thing here. So while I'm over here, I'll just pop that in. That's obviously from something going on behind. But all of these little things add interest. It's got a top to it. Good. Show up the ridge a bit better on this now, it's sort of drying up a bit more perhaps. So I'm letting the paint go and making a lot of the marks for me which is going to create lovely texture and things. Right, I can come back down here while that's drying off up there and pop this wall in. It's quite warm, it's got quite a lot of warmth into that one. And of course a lot of shadow because it's going off behind the corner, behind that corner which helps me to create perspective by putting a lot of shadow in here and under the eaves there very 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 dark here so I'm getting some sepia and some ultramarine blue there because that's going to make a lovely dark Good. And again, I'll put more shape into the stonework a bit later. This wall is quite light, but it's got a lot of shadow, so that gets confusing. So you never know whether you should keep it light or whether you should put the shadow in. So what I'm going to do is to make a a light colour and pop the shadow in over the top. It looks a bit mouldy. So this neutral tint is quite good for old buildings, but putting another colour with it always gives it another dimension really. So you could wet it first, but I haven't the time. There's an old window there that I'm trying to avoid. And a door. So I'm sort of creating shapes as I go with my brush to indicate maybe sort of brick shapes or whatever. There's some plants there. So they're go in or not, not sure. Right, so lots of depth underneath these tiles while this is still damp. But it isn't a uniform shape. I think it's taking on sort of shapes that look a bit like mould 
and years of neglect. Very dark in there. And there's something going on up here, which is, I don't know what that is, but. So because it's quite wet, I can go very dark here and try to upset the shape of that straight edge as well. So really dark. I'm going back in this little corner as well, making it really dark. I'm emphasizing these shadows because I want you to see the difference it makes if you actually do put these lovely dark shadows in. They really are very, very important in everything, but definitely in buildings. It's the darks that give these old buildings characters, really, character, really. There's some shadow making strange marks coming down the wall, which you can put in a bit later when, in fact, it's drier and they won't float away. Right. This depth is coming down the wall. The wall isn't straight. I'm already starting to indicate some sort of brick shapes here with the edge of my brush. These were bricks at one point and just that one stonework, but these look like bricks to me. So I'm just putting the odd brick shape in here and there while it's still damp and going to soften in the, in the wall color. Nice warm color there. I guess the bricks Showing up a little bit through all of this grime. Okay. I'm going to stop and let that dry before I work on the door and the window and paint this wall similarly so I'm not taking up too much time.